Our protagonist, Tatsumi, beats an Earth Dragon, one of the dangerous beasts in this world. He's heading to the Imperial Capital from the countryside to save his village. Tatsumi tries to get a job before getting swindled by a woman. He's on the streets when a rich girl, Arya, offers to take him in. Although suspicious, he still goes with her. We learn that he left the village with Leosu and Seo, his friends, but he was separated from them after being attacked. The next day, Tatsumi learns of the politics in the city and the group of assassins called the Night Raid. Later that night, the assassins target Arya and her family. They kill the guards and her parents, but Tatsumi catches up to Arya to protect her. Akame appears and ignores Tatsumi before going for the guard. The swindler, or Leon, shows up as Tatsumi tries to defend Arya. She reels Akame back before she can defend Tatsumi. Leon shows him all the people the family have tortured. He finds Seo dead and Leosu barely alive. Leosu tells Tatsumi how Arya tortured and killed Seo. Tatsumi kills Arya before Leosu dies in Tatsumi's arms. Leon chooses to drag Tatsumi with her. A newbie has joined the Night Raid. Leon introduces Tatsumi to Shiel, the airhead with scissors, Mine, the Tsundare gun wielder, Bulat, the muscular spearman, Lubak, the pervert, Akame, the katana wielder, and the boss, Nagenda, who wears a prosthesis. Night Raid itself is a revolutionary army. Their goal is to kill the Prime Minister and crush corruption at its source. Tatsumi agrees to join and Akame is assigned his trainer. Akame shows him the ropes of cooking and hunting food. His first targets are Ogre and Gamal. The hit came from a widow whose husband was wrongly accused and killed. Ogre is a highly skilled swordsman in the Imperial Police, while Gamal provides him money for criminal deeds. We also learn that Akame and her sister were forced into an assassin training program by the Empire as children. She defected once and realized the Empire's corruption. Akame and Leon quickly dispatch Gamal while Tatsumi goes after Ogre. After some acting, Tatsumi attacks but gets caught off guard when he thinks Ogre has fallen. Ogre gains the upper hand, but Tatsumi retaliates and ends him. Akame acknowledges Tatsumi after his report and congratulates him. The next trainer is mine. Intruders are detected and the gang heads out. We see Bulat use the armor in Curcio, an imperial arm. The intruders are hunted down one after the other. Mine has the gun relic, Pumpkin. Leon has a beast type, while Lubok uses a wire-based imperial arm. Next day, Tatsumi begins his training with Mine. After catching her in lingerie and being almost blasted, Tatsumi goes out with Mine and sees the unhappiness of the citizens. Mine tells him that only four of the Night Raid members have wanted posters. After a shopping spree and some lunch, the two stumble into a public execution. The horrifying sight steals Tatsumi's resolve to fight the corrupt Prime Minister who is puppeteering the Child King. The next target is Yokal, a distant relative of the Prime Minister Honest. He enjoys torturing and killing women as his guards. The gang dispatched with Mine and Tatsumi on the outskirts. She explains that relics are ancient weapons before sniping Yokal. Mine is a half foreigner. Her reason for fighting is so the borders can open and for Foreigners are no longer discriminated against. The others dispatch Yokal's guards, but one reaches mine and Tatsumi. The Kokenji martial artist attacks the two, but they fight him off and dispatch him. A serial killer is on the loose. Bulat is training Tatsumi. The boss gets a document from a dying informant regarding the headhunter Zonku. He's also equipped with an imperial arm. The Emperor, who built the Empire a thousand years ago, created 48 Imperial Arms, with materials from S-Class Beasts and Orcalcum. Half the weapons were scattered during a prior war. The Imperial Arms are so incredible that a clash of two wielders always ends in one's death. The gang heads out. Akame, the Marasame wielder, and Tatsumi are a team. Zonku goes after Tatsumi and uses Seo's vision to bring him to a secluded place. His imperial arm, Spectator, has five gifts, including insight, farsight, x-ray vision, and etc. This puts Tatsumi at a severe disadvantage in the fight. Akame makes it in the nick of time. Mid-fight, Zonku asks Akame how she deals with the voices of the people she's murdered. Akame states that she doesn't hear any, disappointing Zonku, to which he makes Akame see Kurume, the person she cares about most in the world. Akame doesn't hesitate to attack and immediately dispatches Zonku, saving him from the voices that haunt him as well. Tatsumi will be training under S.H.I.E.L.D. today. She grew up in the Imperial capital, but she was always useless at work. She did find a friend that was always kind to her, but her ex-boyfriend tried to kill her one day and S.H.I.E.L.D. ended up using a knife to protect her. Her friend stopped talking with her after. 
Later, the man's friends tried to gang up on Sheil, but she dispatched them. It's also when she realized that she's really good at killing and decided to become an assassin. You know, when life gives you lemons. Later, Tatsumi tries Zanku's Imperial Arm, but the relic starts rejecting him. Tatsumi gets a book with the descriptions and learns about the strongest ice relic, wielded by an Imperial Guard. Tatsumi starts dreaming about an Imperial Arm that brings people back to life, but the gang tells him to let go of that stupid dream or else his enemies might use that weakness against him. Shiel confronts the forlorn Tatsumi while he's mourning. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister is calling back General Esteth to deal with Night Raid. Tatsumi meets a girl soldier, Siryu, with enhancements in an Imperial Arm, Koro. Turns out she's after Night Raid for killing Captain Ogre. She doesn't know his identity though, gladly. Leon and Tatsumi are in the Red Light District. Their target is a group that captures girls from the slums and uses drugs to make them subservient. Leon and Tatsumi attack the trafficking ring and quickly dispatch the grunts. After ending the traffickers, Leon intends to have a doctor help out all the girls who were abused. Meanwhile, Shiel and Mine get attacked by Siryu. Koro has a quick regeneration, which puts Shiel and Mine at a disadvantage. It's an organic type imperial arm. To dispatch it, you need to destroy its core. Koro has Shiel on the defensive. Mine attacks Koro to distract him while Shiel deals with Siryu. Shield chops her arms off, but guns pop out in place. The gun has no effect, and Shield chops more of Siryu's arms off. In a pinch, Siryu removes Koro's limiter, and he goes berserk, capturing mine. Shield comes back to protect her, but gets shot. Koro bites Shiel in half. Reinforcements arrive, but Shiel uses the last of her life force to distract the guards with a blinding light, allowing mine to escape. Tatsumi loses it after Mine tells everyone about Sheil, but Balad punches him out of his rage. Mine resolves to get payback. Esteth has reached the capital with the intention to destroy Night Raid. She wants to look for a marriage option as well. Tatsumi and Akame mourn Sheil and Tatsumi promises that he won't die after seeing Akame's sadness. Meanwhile, we see Esteth's lackeys taking out the former Prime Minister, Churi, and his daughter, before leaving posters to frame Night Raid. Nagenda orders Leon to spy on Esteth. They discuss the farming done by her subordinates and the bad rap it caused. Bulat and Tatsumi are sent on a cruise ship to protect a certain sympathizer of the revolution. We see Incrucio's invisibility and action and learn of Bulat's backstory with a general and why he joined Night Raid. Meanwhile, Leon is spying on Esteth but quickly retreats on realizing her power. Esteth's lackeys are on the cruise ship and one of them, Niao, makes everyone drowsy with his imperial arm. Scream. Dater approaches Tatsumi wielding the Imperial Arm Belvec and a fight breaks out. Bulat intervenes and saves Tatsumi. The other subordinates show up as well, but Bulat quickly dispatches Datera and knocks back the other two. One of the subordinates turns out to be General Liver, Bulat's prior commander. Liver has the Black Marlin, a ring-type material arm with the power to control any liquid at will. That's a big advantage on a cruise ship. Tatsumi keeps Niao occupied while Liver starts overpowering Bulat and uses his trump card. Bulat tries to land a killing blow, but Niao beats down Tatsumi and intercepts Bulat, distracting him. Bulat's armor deactivates, but Liver is in a pretty bad state. He tries to get Bulat to join up with Esteth, but Bulat refuses. Liver uses an enhancement drug and the two clash again. Bulat cuts him, but he uses his blood to attack Bulat. Liver tells Bulat the reason he joined Esteth before telling him that he'd poisoned his blood, and in turn, poisoned Bulat as well. Bulat is barely standing when Nya uses his flute to enhance himself. Bulat gives Tatsumi and Crucio's key, but if the armor doesn't accept Tatsumi, he'll die. Bulat punches the senses back into Tatsumi, who steals himself and invokes in Crucio. It was made from a dragon type S class beast. The armor accepts Tatsumi and bonds with him. Tatsumi instantly defeats Niao, but Bulat doesn't survive. We see Kurume, Akame's sister, sitting on a pile of bodies. She's being called to the Imperial capital. Mine has recovered from her injury in the fight with Siryu. Lubak and Tatsumi are training as Nagenda is leaving for the base to get more recruits and deliver the relics recovered by Tatsumi. Wave is introduced, a bumpkin from the Imperial Navy. He's here for the special team being assembled by Esteth. We meet Bulls, Kurume, Siryu, Dr. Stylish, and Run. As Death shows up and tests the recruits as an icebreaker. The squad's been named Jaegers, a task force to eliminate Night Raid. Esteth has a chat with the Jaegers and decides to find a wielder for Shield's Imperial Arm, Ekstase. Tatsume, Leon, and Lubak go to a separate hideout in the city where Lubak tells Tatsumi of Esteth's exploits and power, as well as an agenda. A general like Esteth joined Night Raid after seeing the Empire's brutality. 
He also tells Tatsumi to participate in the tournament Esteth is holding. Tatsumi enters and wins the tournament, catching Esteth's eye. She immediately falls in love with him as he checks all the points on her list. She approaches Tatsumi and whisks him away to her room. And now it's time for the gang to save Tatsumi. The Jaegers are attacking a fort while Tatsumi observes with Esteth. Esteth intends to train Tatsumi and make him fall for her. Tatsumi has the idea to use her feelings to get her to his side. Later at night, Tatsumi is in Esteth's rooms and, well, let's just say things get heated. Tatsumi tries to convince her to join the revolutionary army with him to fix the empire, but she simply states that the strong are meant to dominate the weak. His words fall on deaf ears. Next day, Tatsumi meets Kurome and Wave. He learns Kurome is Akame's sister. The three are then taken to hunt dangerous beasts by Esteth. Wave and Tatsumi bond over their situations before the beasts attack. The two dispatch them and Tatsumi escapes in the confusion using Incrucio. Wave catches up to Tatsumi and attacks, seeing the Incrucio armor, his Imperial Arm, Grand Chariot's prototype. Tatsumi keeps trying to escape before being attacked into a stream. Wave goes to follow the stream, but Tatsumi comes out of the water using invisibility. Akame shows up in the nick of time and saves Tatsumi from a dangerous beast. Back in the capital, Wave gets punished by a death. Tatsumi reports on his findings and reveals that the Jaegers are equally matched to Night Raid. Meanwhile, Dr. Stylish has found the headquarters of Night Raid. Leon wakes up in the middle of the night and is attacked by an intruder. Dr. Stylish's subordinates attack the hideout. Lubak and Akame dispatch a group of soldiers before a cyborg, Toby, shows up. Akame faces him and Lubak faces two large soldiers. Two more giant soldiers also show up. Meanwhile, Tatsumi is fighting in another area when Kaku shows up wielding Ekstase. Mine shows up to save him and defeats Kaku, getting back Shield's Imperial Arm. Nagenda shows up on a tamed danger beast with two recruits as Akame and Lubok defeat Toby. Leon's assassin tries to attack Mine but gets intercepted and dispatched by Leon. Of course you couldn't die to that. More assassins show up as the gang reunites but everyone except Tatsumi gets weakened by a paralysis agent deployed by Dr. Stylish. Sasuno falls from the sky and decimates the infantry. Dr. Stylish, upon seeing this, makes his soldiers explode, but Susano starts regenerating. He's an organic imperial arm. The boss sends Susano to get the doctor, but he uses a danger beast shot and enhances himself to the extreme. He eats the remaining soldiers to further strengthen himself into a giant monster. The gang takes him on together, with the weakened Akame getting a piggyback ride from Tatsumi. He throws her at Dr. Stylish, and she uses the Murasame for a one-hit kill. The Night Raid is building a new hideout in an area filled with danger beasts. Susano and Chelsea are introduced to the team. Susano starts building the entire hideout and doing all the chores. Meanwhile, Esteth determines that Dr. Stylish may have been killed, as he's nowhere to be found. She confronts the forlorn Siryu. The gang has a moment of reprieve and shenanigans when we find out that Chelsea can transform into anyone with her Imperial Arm, Gaia Foundation. After training against Danger Beasts, Nagenda asks Chelsea for her views on the new team. She berates Bulat and Sheil for dying due to incompetence, which ticks off the rest. Mine plans to humiliate Chelsea with Lubak and Tatsumi. Chelsea is bathing while Tatsumi is spying on her with Incrucio. Their plan is to throw a wash basin on her. Susano seems to be there and he catches Tatsumi while he's invisible. Turns out it was Chelsea, disguised as Susano. She tells him to control his aura to keep his presence hidden. Tatsumi takes Chelsea's advice to heart and learns she actually cares about everyone. Hard on the outside, soft on the inside. Meanwhile, Esteth misses Tatsumi. New danger beasts have attacked a couple. The Prime Minister asks Esteth to eliminate the new type of danger beasts. The danger beasts attack a caravan, but Bulls protects them with the other Jaegers in tow. Back in their headquarters, Wave is upset that the people Bulls saved judged him for his looks. Bulls states that he's not a hero. He's done a lot of terrible things and killed a lot of innocent people. Wave offers his shoulder to Bulls when his wife and daughter show up. What a wholesome family. Susano is training Tatsumi when Akame calls the two for an emergency meeting. The Genda tells the gang to deal with the new danger beasts. Chelsea is against the idea of putting everyone in danger, but concedes to the hero's wishes. Esteth discusses with Run that the danger beasts were previously people, and the two determine that the danger beasts may be a part of Dr. Stylish's experiments that ran rampant after his death. Tatsumi and Lubak are together on patrol when Tatsumi asks him about Nagenda. Turns out Lubak had fallen for her, and joined the army to follow her. He joined Night Raid for the exact same reason. Tatsumi heads to a mountaintop alone while Esteth is on night patrol. Fate brought the two together again. 
Asteth asks him if he joined the Revolutionary Army yet and praises him for getting stronger before she senses a suspicious man. He's behind the Danger Beasts and reveals his Imperial Arm which teleports Asteth and Tatsumi to an island. Asteth immediately adapts and is excited for her date with Tatsumi. Monsters like Dr. Stylish's enhanced form show up but Asteth and Tatsumi easily dispatch them. Asteth mostly. By the end of the day, Asteth has figured out how to go back. The two discuss their pasts. She was a part of the Pardis clan, a hunting clan, and she was the daughter of the chief. Their clan had the law of eat or be eaten. Her mother was eaten by a danger beast. One day while she was out hunting, her village was burned to the ground by a northern tribe. Her dying father's last words were to never be weak. Esteth shows Tatsumi her imperial arm, the tattoo on her chest, the demon's extract, a blunt type weapon that manipulates ice. She overcame the weapon's madness effect and made the weapon submit to her will. Tatsumi realizes that Esteth's personality isn't affected by anything external. Meanwhile, the suspicious man turns out to be Sayura, Minister Honest's son. He opens the portal and Tatsumi enters it before Estath. He uses his invisibility to hide from her. A corrupt nobleman is eliminated by Chelsea right before Wave and Kurome show up. She turned into a cat to avoid them. Siryu kills some thieves and Wave catches her after the act. He has his doubts about the twistedness of the Empire but chooses to fulfill his duties as a soldier. The Genda discusses the path of peace religion. They may be taking up arms to launch a religious rebellion and she intends to use the rebellion to make their move. The Revolutionary Army is allied with a tribe on the west which will also make their move, and they'll assault the Empire in a three-way offensive to get to the Imperial Castle. But first, they must assassinate Bolek, an assistant to the Lord of the Revolution who's actually a spy to the Minister. Bait is sent to bring out the Jaegers as well, mainly to assassinate Kurome and Bulls. The Jaegers head out after a report on Night Raid taking the bait. Bulls, Kurome, and Wave are heading out for the revolutionaries through a ravine. Mine is monitoring the three. She tries to snipe Kurome as the Jaegers stumble onto a decoy but misses. Susano attacks the three from the decoy and launches Wave far off. The rest of the team shows up as well. Kurome summons corpses with her Imperial Arm, Yatsufusa, including an S-Class Danger Beast. Akame lunges at Kurome, but the corpse of one of their friends, Natalia, intercepts her. Akame is sent back and the proper battle begins. Susano faces the Danger Beast, Detsugul, while Mine gets attacked by a gunslinger corpse, Doya. Other corpses keep being summoned and the gang starts getting overpowered. Leon gets her arm cut off by Kurome while she's distracted fighting Rokugo. Meanwhile, Esteth and the other Jaegers are blocked by thugs. Akame is facing Bulls and Wall when Leon shows up to help her out, leaving Rokugo for an agenda. Chelsea uses an opportunity to help Tatsumi dispatch Henter, leaving just Ape Man. He quickly dispatches it as well. Kurome summons her last corpse, Kaiser Frog, which captures mine and swallows her. Tatsumi reaches Kurome and the frog right after. Susano's trump card is activated, which can only be used thrice before its master will die. He becomes extremely strong and dispatches Detsugul while mine destroys the Kaiser Frog from the inside. Akame and Leon work together to dismember Wall before overpowering Bulls. He detonates his Imperial Arm, Rubicant, as his last stand. Everyone barely survives the explosion, including Bulls, who stumbles onto a crying girl while escaping. It's Chelsea, in disguise, and she assassinates him as he tries to help her. Chelsea tells Lubak she's going after Kurome while disguised as Bulls. Meanwhile, we learn about the experiment to make assassins. Only seven out of hundreds lived. Akame and Kurome depended on each other to make it through the brutal tests, but the experimenters eventually split them up. Kurome was taken to the capital while Akame went into the 7th Elite's team. Kurome was experimented on and drugs were used to enhance her. And so the gang regroups. Leon's going to have her arm stitched together by Lubak so she'll be good as new. Lubak shows up to the others and tells them about Chelsea's plan. Akame and Tatsumi are sent to help Chelsea. Meanwhile, Chelsea, disguised as Bulls, approaches Kurome. She finds an opportunity and pierces Kurome with a needle. Chelsea drops her guard and remembers her past, but Kurome wakes up as Chelsea is walking away. She seems extremely out of it. Chelsea tries to run, but Natala and Doya dismember and kill her. Akame and Tatsumi are still on the search when Tatsumi finds Chelsea's head atop a spike for the public to view. The surviving members regroup and head to the Kyo Rock Palace for Bullock. The Jaegers and the four Rakshasha demons, Ibarra, Mez, Sten, and Suzuka, are guarding him. 
Wave had saved Kurome after the fight with Night Raid, and she ended up coming on the mission even with her injuries. Meanwhile, Mayan and Tatsumi are scouting the streets while Lubak does the same elsewhere. Lubak is noticed by Mez and Sten. Akame and the revolutionary informants are looking for a way to enter the palace when Ibarra kills the informants and faces Akame. She knows him from another assassination group. Lubak is being chased by Mez and Sten. He gets attacked by Sten and pretends to be dead. Thinking they've killed him, the Rakshasas turn their attention to a revolutionary spy. Lubak chooses to save her and attacks the two. Meanwhile, Ibarra disarms Akame and grabs Murasame, but it rejects him. Akame takes the advantage and dismembers Ibarra. Run appears right after and attacks Akame before, as his name implies, running off. Lubak allows the woman to escape before running away himself. Sten chases after him but runs into a wire before being impaled by Lubak. The wires enter his body and crush his heart. Mez commends Lubak for defeating Sten and uses her sweat to ruin Lubak's trap wires. She overpowers him and grabs his throat, but Lubak catches her in the back with knives he'd thrown prior. A 200 IQ move. Bullock learns of the death of three of his guards. The gang plans to use the festival to sneak into the palace. Siryu and Suzuka notice Mine and Tatsumi walking through the city. Siryu follows the two outside the city and attacks the two in a rage. Mine takes notice of the gunpowder and Tatsumi carries her out of harm's way. The two lose to Siryu, but Suzuka attacks them. Tatsumi drags her away while Mine deals with Siryu. She angers Mine by mentioning the friends she killed and Koro devoured. Pumpkin is evening the odds with its increased firepower, so Siryu unleashes Koro's trump card. Siryu gets up close and knocks Mine back, damaging her considerably. Tatsumi is having a hard time with Suzuka. Susano and Leon are attacking the palace, facing off against Kurome. Wave then intervenes, evening the grounds. He invokes Grand Chariot. Tatsumi lures Suzuka into ruins and starts making the building crumble on top of Suzuka. In a pinch, Mine uses Pumpkin to take out Koro and Siryu in one fell swoop, cutting the two in half. Siryu starts a time bomb in her head. Tatsumi ends up saving Mine from the explosion. The two have a pretty sweet moment. Meanwhile, Lubak and Akame have assassinated Bullock. General Budo has appeared and the minister summons his son, Sayura, having appointed him as a commander of an elite unit. He's going to handle Night Raid. The revolutionaries are split up and discussing the plans along with Mine and Tatsumi's relationship. A woman from the residence leads Lubak and Tatsumi into the royal palace. They find a lot of the revolutionaries inside dead. The corpses blow up in front of Tatsumi and Lubak and they're faced with Sayura and his soldiers. Tatsumi attacks him, but the great general Budo falls from the sky. He wields the lightning imperial arm, Adramalik. Sayura uses Shambhala, an arm that manipulates space. He enhances himself and starts overpowering Lubak. Lubak gets restrained by the woman who led them inside, but Sayura ends up killing her. This enrages Lubak and he cuts Sayura's hand off, retrieving Shambhala. The woman gets up again and stabs Lubak in the back to save her family. Sayura retrieves a relic again and teleports Lubak into the emptiness of space, but Lubak uses Crosstail to bring Sayura with him. He pierces Sayura and both get teleported back to the capital, falling down from the sky. Lubak's relic breaks and he falls into spears in front of a captured Tatsumi. Tatsumi's public execution posters are up, and so the girls decide to save him. Esteth approaches Tatsumi and asks him to join her, but he rejects her attempts. Esteth states that she'll perform his execution herself. Night Raid discusses the execution and Lubak's death. Tatsumi's public execution is initiated in a coliseum where the king makes a speech before Esteth is told to execute him. The minister leaves with the king and Budo is asked to oversee the execution. Esteth approaches Tatsumi, a blade to his neck. Mine snipes at Esteth's feet. Nagenda is in the skies on a Manta beast. Explosions ensue and the gang faces off against the two generals. Leon and Mine go for Budo. Akami is heading inside the area where Nagenda and Susano face off against Esteth. Akami retrieves Tatsumi's Incrucio and frees Tatsumi while Nagenda activates Susano's trump card. Budo is overpowering Leon and Mine. In a pinch, Mine points Pumpkin at Budo as he charges up his trump card. The two fire, but Mine's attack overpowers and dispatches Budo. Pumpkin breaks and she falls into a hole, but Tatsumi catches her. Nagenda orders a retreat while Susano tries to end Esteth. Esteth freezes time and space before destroying Susano. And holy crap. 
Nagenda uses her trump card for the third and final time, using her life force to resurrect Susano. He attacks as death again, giving everyone else an opportunity to escape. Tatsumi and the rest find a safe spot. Mine is extremely wounded and she has a final talk with Tatsumi. She expresses her feelings and tries to comfort him. She kisses him before passing away. Legenda realizes that Susano didn't use her life force for his trump card, but instead his own, thus saving her. Wave is facing protesting civilians who are siding with the revolution. Run tells Wave that he joined the Jaegers to reform the nation from the inside. Meanwhile, Esteth is snuffing out the revolutionaries. Akame sees a message on a dead body for a duel, a challenge by Kurome. Tatsume is there as well. She accepts the duel much to Tatsumi's dismay. He asks her to come back alive. Akame meets Kurome in an abandoned church. The two discuss their past and how Kurome felt betrayed when Akame left the empire. Kurome unsheaths Yatsufusa and summons her corpses. The 3v1 begins. During their battle, a danger beast appears. It destroys Kurome's summons and the sisters end up working together to face the danger beast. The two make short work of it before facing off again. Akame is about to deliver the final blow when Wave intervenes. Tatsumi intervenes as well to stop Wave. He convinces Wave to stop interfering, and the sisters take up their arms again. Akame comes out as the victor. No celebrations this time. Wave takes Kurome's body back while Tatsumi comforts Akame. The minister tells the king to unleash his ultimate imperial arm passed down through the royal line to put an end to the revolutionaries. The revolutionary army attacks the palace. Leon infiltrates with Akame and Tatsumi. Run approaches the three as they make their way to the royal guards. He attacks the three with Mastema. We learn of his past as a teacher and how he infiltrated the Jaegers to reform it from the inside. But Night Raid's revolution threw a wrench in his plans. Leon faces Run herself and lets Akame and Tatsumi escape. Run pops out his divine wings. Meanwhile, the minister convinces the king to unleash his royal arm. Just as Tatsumi and Akame make it to the two, Akame attacks the minister, but the ultimate imperial arm is activated. It's a huge mech, Gundam style. The king destroys many with a single attack. Tatsumi attacks the imperial arm, but gets knocked back, and the city is now in flames. Tatsumi gets caught and knocked into the ground. Wave suddenly swoops in and saves Tatsumi from the king's attack. Run and Leon stop their fight to save civilians. Tatsumi and Wave try attacking, but they aren't able to break through. Tatsumi discovers a weak spot in the armor. Wave covers him while Tatsumi punches the weak spot hard. Wave gets knocked back, his relic disengages, Tatsumi doesn't back down. He remembers his companions, and the ancient soul inside Encrucio causes the armor to evolve and grow wings. It's pretty dang cool. Tatsumi pierces the armor with all of his strength and destroys the Imperial Arm. He stops the giant weapon from hitting civilians as it falls, using up all of his strength. Akame embraces the critically wounded Tatsumi. As death sees Tatsumi. She feels pain in her heart, even though she thinks Tatsumi died because of his weakness. She loses it and states that the weak empire must be terminated. She forms a ring of ice. Akame and Nesteth face off. Esteth has the upper hand, but Akame holds her down, even dodging Esteth's giant meteor. But she gets pinned by Esteth under her heel. Esteth's about to deliver the final blow, but Akame knocks her back. She cuts herself on her blade, enabling her trump card. Markings cover Akame's body and her eyes, empowering her. Akame attacks and pushes Esteth back, destroying her attacks and overpowering her. She pierces Esteth's arm, invoking the curse. Esteth cuts the arm off before the curse can spread. A spectacular fight ensues. Akame's about to deliver the final blow when Esteth freezes time. She tries to pierce Akame, but it turns out it was just an afterimage. The time starts, and Akame delivers the final blow. The dying Esteth walks towards Tatsumi. She embraces his body before freezing both him and herself over shattering into nothing. The minister tries to escape, but Leon catches up to him. He uses a ring to break her imperial arm before shooting her. Leon punches him in the face and gets shot repeatedly. Leon perseveres and smashes his face in, ending him as well. They've won, but at a considerable cost. Leon says her goodbyes to Akame before collapsing from blood loss in an alley. The child king is taken to the gallows. Run has become the new minister of home affairs, and Wave has become a commander. Tatsumi's village got a great sum of money. Nagenda and Akame have a final chat. Nagenda will set up the nation while Akame will be leaving the city. 
And with that gruesome end, that's the end of the video. As always, if you liked what you saw, subscribe to the channel. I'll be uploading a lot of videos just like this, so I'll see you at the next one.